We are the real thing. In terms of culture, The Real Thing are one of the most important bands in the history of British music. The Real Thing were the first all black British band to have a number one song in the charts. And what a song it was. You can hear everything. You can't stop singing that song. Uh, when I first heard You To Me Are Everything by The Real Thing, I thought, that's a hit. We had the hit record, number one. I remember being told that it was selling at 25,000 copies a day. You to me are everything, to you something I can sing, oh baby, oh baby. If you were black in this country in the 70s, then you basically had a strike against you. There are places in Liverpool where we couldn't go if we didn't want to hear words like um, coon and wog. You just stayed away from her place. Children of the Ghetto. Children of the Ghetto is a landmark British pop song. When you listen to the lyrics, we are the lyrics. We are the lyrics of Children of the Ghetto. In a concrete jungle. You're doing this sweet, quite light, soul pop song, and then you go on to do that. They were, without doubt, one of the best black bands to have come out of the UK. They are the true pioneers of pop soul. The real thing, they changed the face of British music. They, they lit the fire of anything that's come after. And the real thing's still together as well, it's beautiful. That buzz is still there in the band. Man. It's fun, and that's why we still do it. We do it because we love it, you know, it's in us. I love you. Okay, well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are across the globe. Welcome to On the Sofa with yours truly, Esther Austin. Well, today is a real honour to catch up with Chris Omu from The Real Thing. I haven't interviewed him, I think, for maybe two or three years. And um, I've been watching you guys still gigging. You still sounding incredible. And I thought, let's just see what Chris and Dave are up to, Chris and Dave from The Real Thing. So welcome, Chris. Thanks, Esther. How are you? I'm cool. I'm, I'm a bit tired. I I came back from South Africa last week and I've taken a bit of a dive. You know, it was a bit of a hype. It was a really yep. great journey. And then I'm just trying to stay above board at the moment in my mind, you know, because it was, yeah. it was incredible trips. Um, mm. So listening to some of your music has just kept me, you know, kept me above. Kept nice me above. Yeah. That's what music's all about, man. That's what music's all about. Absolutely, absolutely. And so this, you know, for the, the purpose of this conversation, I just want to see, you know, what's been going on with you guys, because I noticed you, you've got a lot of gigs and you're still doing quite a lot. And um, and also just to tap into you to see, you know, how you coped through COVID. I know that was about over a year ago now, but it's still having its impact and all those yeah. wonderful things, Chris. So um, yeah. welcome. Thank you. And um yeah, it's been a really good period for The Real Thing, oh. uh, to be quite honest, because going back to um, COVID, mm. when the business basically shut down, I'll be honest with you, that is the first time in over 40 years that I and Dave, in particular, have had an enforced rest. Oh, wow. Yeah. Most of the time when we've took a rest before, it's been because it's been our own decision and our own choice and at our own timing mm. like we've had something to do like a holiday like my brother my lazy brother eddie used to go to australia for three months every year so that was an enforced eddie rest as it were yeah. but yeah. um yeah it was really strange in one way but in another way esther it's probably one of the best things that could have happened to us um creatively mm. okay. because i've been trying i've been struggling to get over Eddie's passing. Yeah, I remember from the last, yeah. Yeah, because everything that I've done since I can remember has been done with Ed. Mm. Um, our writing, I evolved because he taught me how to songwrite. Mm. And 
you know, and then I got the group going. And then, you know, we brought Eddie in, into the real thing. So that took us to another stage. And basically, everything has been done with him. Mm. And when he passed, it was like, I didn't really know what to do, you know? Yes. I didn't know whether I wanted to carry on writing. Because, you see, one thing we always had was a sounding board. If I was working on an idea, I'd say, hey, I'd listen to this. You know, mm. and if you got a good vibe, he'd say, well, why don't you try, you know. So you had a good sounding board there. But with that gone, mm. it was a very important loss on that level. Yeah. So it was a little bit in between two minds, whether we were going to carry on as a as a creative force or really sort of bring it out as just a live force with what we've done. Mm. Okay. But that's something that the real thing have never done. We've never stood still. And now never gonna, 40 years. Yeah, it was never gonna happen that creatively I wasn't gonna get back into the swing. And lockdown gave me that opportunity. And we were able to get our new album together, which we're really, really proud of. And you know, it's just taken us to another level mm. again because all of a sudden, it's not best ofs. It's not what we've done in the past. We've got something. This is us now. Wow. This is us now, you know. And what, what do you mean by that? What is the difference between you? So, you know, that's because that's quite a profound statement in, in a very simplified way. But what, so what do you mean by that, Chris? The difference is we can still sing. Words could not express how much you mean to me There must be some other way to make you see If it takes my heart and soul, you know I'd pay the price Everything that I possess, I'd gladly sacrifice Oh yes, you can. <laughs> well, that's it. Because that's what people uh, don't know. Mm. They don't know. Only the ones that come to see us know. Um, it also means that we're still here mm. and we're still creating. Yes. And then it's up to the people to, to decide whether, oh, but it sounds a bit old fashioned or, oh, I like that. Mm. What, we've tra- what, what we've actually tried to do is we don't want, we didn't want to lose what we had, that vibe. But we also wanted to introduce who we are now. Mm. which is mm. a progression of that vibe. Yeah. Right? And I think that keeping our core audience is extremely important. Mm. I'm not interested in breaking new audience. I'm not interested. Yeah. Because I know that if your material is good enough, you will do. It's, it's that simple, you know. Yeah. Uh, if, they get, if they get the chance to hear it. And now, thank, thankfully, for social media, they, they have had the chance to hear it. Hear it. And, and what I was made up about Esther is it did extremely well in the R&B chart. And not only did it do well, the new album, it also sparked off other albums like Four From Eight and things like that that a younger audience hadn't heard. They hadn't heard things like Children of the Ghetto and things. Um. <laughs> Children of the Ghetto is a landmark British pop song. That is okay. such a powerful, powerful yeah. track. Because I know you you um, did a um, sort of remake of it, I think at a different level, because I remember you sent it to me yeah. years ago, and I was like, wow. But yeah. that was also not long after Eddie passed. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I remember when I listened to that, I can hear your outpouring in that. You know, because by the way, ladies and gents, Eddie and Moop, um passed away in 2018. Um, and Children of the Ghetto, Chris did, um, uh, a, 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 I would say, a revision of that. But the revision, it was so poignant because I can literally hear Chris's heart outpouring in that revision. It was very profound. So that's what we're talking about. I'm just going to swap over a plug, Esther. Okay. <laughs> I'll pretend that you're not doing that, Chris. You know, this is like, let's like say, live TV, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're there. We're there. Um, yet, yeah, so, as I say, people, 
a lot of younger people know the song, especially a lot of young black people know the song. Yes. But they've heard it from the likes of Mary J. Blind, Courtney Pine, Philip Bailey from Earth, Wind & Fire. And I can't tell you the amount of young hip-hop artists that use the song. Sampled, yeah. You know, um, and it was nice to, for the first time to be able to just get it out there mm. and show people, let people just hear it from a slightly different perspective and keeping the same atmosphere to the to the song and you know that's why i say it was great that lockdown came mm. um because it really spurred me on and we were able to develop our stage show which is even it's strong it's so strong you know mm. um and we work there's a, we're working on a new drama there's a new this is all in its very early stages. And Stan Hay, who who wrote uh, A V the Same Pet and a lot of other things, came up with the idea that he wanted to do a three-part drama about the group. Wow. And that's just been finished. Obviously, I've been helping him to keep it on track a bit. Mm. without losing his artistic license, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's going to be really good. You know, it's in its early stages, but it's definitely something that's on the horizon. Horizon. You're always busy because I know, is it is it two years ago or three years ago that you also brought out your documentary? Um, yeah. Everything, the real thing journey, and yeah. that I, I always remember the sort of whole publicity thing around that. And there was this real fantastic um, rollout of that. Um, and I, have, I've, I believe I had interviewed you around that time, and you said there is some really interesting things in that documentary. I must admit, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I know, I know, I hold my hands up, um, but but I will do. But you know, how has that? Um, what's been the take up of that? And also, as part of this journey, you know, with losing Eddie, the lockdown, you know, having the documentary come out at that time, what was that like for you, Chris? I couldn't watch it at first um, because it was pretty much finished when Eddie, when Eddie died. Um, it was only, I would say, maybe six months before. Okay before it was finished, not before it came out, but before it was actually finished. And I always remember Simon, we went, we, we were working in Gloucester, we were doing a festival, Simon said, come over to the studio and have a, have a look. Mm. It was, it's just been finished. The first draft, you know, and then it's, if there's anything we want to change, there's still time to do it, you know. So we went and had a look and it was very hard. And after that, I didn't watch it for a long, long time. And then it came on, it came out, and it was on quite a, a lot of the cinemas. Yes, it was, yeah. 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 And so we were doing some question and answers, so I had to watch it, if you know what I'm saying. But it wasn't easy. Um, but that's just been taken up by Netflix, by the way. Oh, excellent. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago it was taken up by Netflix, UK. So, I mean, that is in itself. It's still on iPlayer which proves how popular it's been. Yes. So um, it's, all, it's introduced the group to a new audience, mm -hmm. obviously, um, because a lot of um, the youth and a lot of uh, younger people who weren't around at that time are interested to, to see where the songs came from. I'm because they don't know the yes. you to me, Force, yeah. can't you? They know them, but they don't know where they come from. And I think out of curiosity, a lot of them have watched the film and have been really gobsmacked by it because they didn't realise that there is a depth mm. to the band. And there's also a social statement surrounding our whole upbringing in the business. Mm. And what's, what's that social statement? <laughs> well, what we were brought up, we were brought up in the ghetto, four guys who had nothing, brought up in the ghetto of Liverpool, and against all odds, really, came through. I mean, that's basically it, you know. Um, it wasn't easy. 
Um, it wasn't easy being black anyway, mm. because they didn't really know where to put us. Because we weren't American. Yes. You know? And if you understand what I'm saying, I don't think England is what I would term a sole country. <laughs> I think it's more like for instance I know that like the majority 90% of the people would rather listen to the glam rock and the sort of the uh, the romantic sort of uh, phase rather than the soul phase that might sound crazy when you think mm. true because if you look at let me give you an example Nana Rogers yes she, They're legends, they're what you call legends. Absolutely. What he's actually read is it's unbelievable. But <coughs> outside his own country, in America, it didn't really mean that much, Sheik. It didn't really mean that much. It was in Europe okay. where, it, where it was really, really big. We're but losing you a bit. You keep. Yeah. So, it, was, yeah. it was England, right? But not. It was Europe, but not England. Because if you look at the festivals that you see now, Rogers on, you would think that it should be right at the top of the bill, and it ain't. And I look at some of them and I think, how can that possibly be? But that's it. That's, yeah. you know, it's like it hasn't got the cred of other forms of music in the country. Don't get me wrong, it's got its fans yes. as we our fans that have always loved soul music and always will but it's not a huge market for black acts now when we came out now the world's your oyster if you're black over here because you can promote yourself you've got social media you, you've got your so many avenues yeah. to get people who like soul music yeah. and and R&B music but we didn't have that then we didn't have Anything remotely like that, then. So, if you had a product, mm. that product had to be played on the radio or television. And if it wasn't, you didn't stand a chance. Yeah. Now, you imagine we're four black guys from England and we've got a single out, mm. and then you've got the OJs, the stylistics, they've all got singles out. What are they going to play? Well, they're not going to play a real thing, are they? Yeah, they because they've only got so many slots on radio. They've only got so many slots for music. So they can only play so many new soul releases, shall we say, mm. per week. Right? So what are they going to play? So that's what we were fighting against as well. Um, and also we were fighting against the fact that it was such a small market for black music over here so that was another obstacle that we had to sort of fight you know and then there was growing up in in Toxteth, i mean without going too deeply into because we've, we've done this mm, we've yes. done this before yes. and we were cocooned in an area where we had everything that young black guys and young black girls want community mm. we didn't have to step out of that community Till you got to a certain age, and when you got to a certain age, you re you realise, hey, there's a world out there that we can't get into. That we can't get into. It's that simple, you know. Basically, you could go into anywhere you wanted to shop or anything like that. I'm not saying that. Mm. If you want to go out socially in the evening, you weren't getting in any of them clubs. No way. There's no way you were getting. You might get in them if, just say for instance, if I just went with my girlfriend. Mm. I'd get in. But then I'd feel very vulnerable. Yeah. So what you tend to do when you're young is you tend to go out with your friends. Right? No chance. There's no chance you're getting into any of them clubs. So until we actually formed the group and we started playing ourselves in them clubs so we could walk into them clubs, we didn't realise that there was a world out there. And that was the world that we actually bloomed in because all the black Americans were bringing their records into Toxteth and nowhere else 
So there was nowhere outside the Toxic in Liverpool you would earn any of them tracks. You weren't even in. You couldn't even buy off of them on import. Because, you know, it was the American basis. Yes. The American base was near Liverpool. So over a weekend, all the black GIs used to come in to Toxic, to all clubs in Toxic, and bring the music with them. We See, them there's, there's you, sorry, Chris, you sharing this, you know, it, it's... My spirit said to me, you really need to go and watch the documentary because, mm. you know, the more that I know we've touched on this before, but, you know, you're shedding um, and sharing a few more things that I've not heard before. Mm. And it, it shows when you said that the documentary, there's a richness to your story. You're not just a group, there's a richness and a depth. And as you're talking, it's almost like I want to know more because there, yeah. there is more. Um, yeah. and I'm going to show you, Esther, that that documentary is your thing. I'm telling you, you will absolutely be into that documentary, and it'll it'll tell you a lot about the times socially as well, mm. about the times, about the riots and all that business. It'll tell you every the documentary will tell you everything. Yeah, I'm I'm going to watch it, and you know, just from this, um, Chris, the the question that keeps coming to me is, amidst all of that. What kept you guys motivated? Because, you know, you you were coming up against all the time, mm. all the time. And now look at where you are at. And, you know, you, you, as we say, there are a couple of your tracks that are synonymous to the real thing. Like you to me or everything. That is, it's almost like the signature tune. And also, um, can you feel the force? Um, so what was it that kept you guys going through that? And then the other question is, you know, what What do you think has kept your longevity? Okay. It's a little bit of a paradox, really, because I said to you that there wasn't... They weren't really into soul music over mm. here in a way that gives you the credibility that you should have when you've had the type of hits that we've had. Mm. But if I, if I said to you that the, the British public didn't take us to the heart, I'd be lying because yeah. we, were always, we always felt great. We were young. We didn't care. Do you know what I'm saying? We we didn't care. It didn't it didn't bother us. And by the time we got to an age where it started to we started to become aware mm. of mm. the world and what we were stepping into. We'd broken down our own barriers because we were in a group. So basically we could go where we wanted to. Our world was open. Our world was open. And I think that we've always been special to the solsters in this country. Um, so it's always made us feel good. So we've always felt great doing what we do. Mm. And we've always loved doing what we do. You can tell. You can still tell. Yes. Yeah. And, and because we've never allowed ourselves to stand still, musically mm. we've always been able to satisfy ourselves as well as our yeah. audience and in doing so you don't start to become <sighs> caricatures of yourself mm. because it's okay looking like you do and dressing like you do when you you first doing you to me and everything because then it, I think the real thing would ahead of the time, as a matter mm. of fact, as to what we actually wore. Because you've got to sort of understand what all the other black bands were wearing at the time. Wore, um, at the time. And so we broke down that barrier, and there was no stage suits and things like that. Whereas everybody else was still, a lot of other bands were still uniform. We were in real street gear. Everything you saw me wearing on top of the pops. Mm. Up to I would wear, I would wear normally, apart from when I was wearing my sequin hat in Conga Bat and things like that, when I decided to go a little bit uh, glam, you know. Uh, but on the whole, yeah, it, it was like that. Um, I just, we've always just sort of thought to ourselves, just keep moving, you know, just keep creative and keep doing your songs because mm -hmm. people love them and we're proud of them. And... You know, it doesn't matter how stale we might feel. Mm -hmm. 
the people who come to see it are only coming to see you to see themselves. That's why you're working in this festival, that fe you know, and in this country and that country and whatever. But mix it with new stuff what you're doing, mm. and then that keeps us sharp. It keeps our man sharp. Mm. You, know, you don't all of a sudden feel I can't write that type of thing anymore because once you stop. And you yeah. can't just jump from you to me mm -hmm. to can you feel the force. You can't just jump from that to that. It's a progression. Mm -hmm. And you don't reach that progression just by... Say, for instance, if we'd have stopped writing songs when the real thing stopped having hits. There's, not, there's no way in a million years that we could write what is on our new album. We just couldn't do it. It would be impossible. So that's why we're still here now. That's why, that's the longevity. We've always kept our minds sharp. We've kept our voices sharp because yes, we haven't ever stopped working. So your voice, if you look after yourself mm -hmm. and you look after it, should just get more and more rich. And stronger. Yeah. I was listening to the OJs um, about a year back. I bought um, a DVD mm -hmm. of their show. And I listened to the guy, Eddie LeBert, singing. And I'm telling you, he sings better now than he did then. His voice, his, his voice is, is something you can feel. It's like it's coming from his stomach. From Sounds better. It, it, yeah, it resonates really yeah. deep. Yeah. yeah. Nothing thin. Yeah, that's right. Yes, rich, powerful, and rich and deep. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. And they're retiring the though. They're, they're they're retiring now. Yeah. Um, um what's his name? What's the Eric. Doing? Yeah, Eric is still going to continue because he's a bit younger as a solo yeah. artist. But yeah. um, Walter and Eddie are, are retiring, but they've had a good, as I said, a good innings. Unbelievable. I mean, I remember the old days before, way before. Love Train and all that, way, way, way before, when they were doing things like I Dig Your Act and things. Mm. And it's like, if you listen to that and you listen to where Backstabbers and things oh, yeah. like and Money mm. and things like that, the way the voice blossomed, that's what keeps me going. That's what kept me going because that made me realise that your voice shouldn't get worse as you get older it should get better and the way i look at it is people will still want to see you if you sound good yes definitely yes we all age and yes we're not sort of um doing all the latest hip-hop dances and wearing all the hip-hop clothes mm. but that's not what people come to see real thing for yeah. what they come to see real thing for is to hear us singing them tunes that they grew up with or maybe that parents grew up with and if we can still sing them songs better now than what mm. we did then yeah job done yeah it's just like i saw you guys was it two years ago okay you were in catford and you were someplace else and that yeah. energy that yeah. you brought to the energy that you guys brought i'm like you what? What is he on? Because you were just so energized, and that yeah. in that energy you're showing that you're passionate. In that energy you're showing that we are still here. We still got so much to give to you, and you can tell that you give, you love, yeah. and you give, and you love, and you give. And it's this expansiveness of, you know, you had us jumping, and I'm like, you know, it's you know, age is nothing but a number, and when mm. you're passionate about something. And you yeah. go out and do it. All everything else fades. All the fluff fades. Um, but you're just there to perform, to give, to share, and you're touching so many lives. And and as much as I've listened to um, you to me or everything, especially when you've got that intro. Once you hear the intro, yeah. it's almost like everybody just shut was like, yeah, let's get ready because this is it. And yeah. then you begin. It, it's incredible. It, it's it's incredible. Um, and I mean. If I may, I mean, and and also just watching, um, I watched you guys. Was it the Philharmonic Orchestra? Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and the energy around that. And, you know, Eddie was in that, that, that if I remember correctly, yep. that video. And, Absolutely. you know, it's about... I tell you now, if you talk about energy, Eddie, Eddie really had the energy. I mean, really, you know. Yeah, he it, was like you know, a rabbit. I, I, I could lay, lay back a bit then. Because I was doing the lead singing, so I used to leave all the jumping about and the bopping for to, uh, to Eddie and Dave, you know. Yeah. But uh, obviously, when Ed passed, it, it was just me and Dave there. They had to sort of step out of my shop and do a bit of work, you know, as well as singing. But um, I tell you what, we did a fantastic gig in South End last night at the Clips, oh, wow. and we worked with Lee from Imagination. Oh yeah, I saw him oh, too. Oh, another time, once again, whose voice just keeps getting better. Absolutely, I'm better. I'm yeah. Better. And you know, you know, we we both feel the same about things. You know, yeah. keep moving. Yeah. Keep moving. Keep doing new projects. Keep your show sharp. And you know, I know that it was actually packed out, but I tell you what, that audience went out there, went out of that theatre, really happy because both shows were like really. They were up, they were dancing, they were singing, you know, and it was just so nice. So I think from that era, mm. a lot of the stuff now is geared towards social media mm -hmm. before live. And then when the acts have a little bit of success, then they start thinking about live. Yes. Whereas in my day, it mm. was live. And then if you were lucky, you got a single, a, a, a record that may be successful, but it didn't matter because we were always going to have a career singing live. We've just been very lucky, very fortunate that we've been able to do it at a level that has been really enjoyable for us because we've had success, you know. And that was the same with Lee, you know, same with Lee you know, yesterday. I saw him at Windsor two, two weeks ago and I had to text him to say, he was, he was off the chain. Um, yeah. It was really off the chain. And, and why? Because we've literally got a few minutes left. Because, um, you know, this has been this has been almost 14 minutes already. And I can talk, do a part two, part three with you. But, you know, it's just been really lovely to connect because it's really nice also to, to feel your vibes, your energy. And also it, it inspires. Hopefully it will also not just inspire people because of the music, but because of your drive and what you what it brings to life. You know, you yeah. guys said, you know, you've come from the ghetto and it was hard, but, you know, persistence, um, tenacity, passion has got you here. So in itself, that's another, I would say, that's the messenger in you guys mm. and in the music that supports <laughs> others. The message that's important mm. that I'd like to get across, mm. to, especially to all young, especially black, aspiring mm. musicians and that nobody can hold you back nobody it's not possible it's not possible in our business for anyone to hold you back you know because if you've got it mm -hmm. and you and people hear it which now they can do yes. because of the platforms if it's good enough and if it's commercial enough mm -hmm. nobody can hold you back now nobody so, but in our day, a record company could turn around and say, nope, we're mm. not releasing that. We want you to work with so-and-so. So a lot of that was taken. Luckily for real thing, we had our manager, Tony Hall, who didn't allow a lot of that kind of nonsense to happen. That's how it was then. That's how it was. Now, you're in charge of your own destiny. And you can do it, man. Any, anyone can do it. Excellent. If they're good enough, anyone can do it. Brilliant. That's a lovely, almost finale. That's that's brilliant because even that's just spoken in because I was feeling a bit frustrated today. And then it's almost like I'm like, Usa, keep going. Nice. Wow. And how is Dave, by the way? We've literally got about two or three minutes. How is Dave? Got to say hello to Dave, my man. <laughs> Same old bloody nuisance as he's always been, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave's good. Dave's good. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. He's good. <laughs> brilliant. And when are you next in London? When is the real thing next in London? Um, um, we're doing a festival in Walton on Thames is in London. Isn't it? The Boogie Land Festival. Have a look on on our Facebook. Okay, we'll do. It, it's it's a Boogie Land, 
And there's a, a lot of really good acts on Soul to Soul and everyone's on. Okay, okay. It, it will be a really good gig. Okay. And you have all them bands. Oh, uh, nice, nice. That, that's next week. But we've just done the Boys Day as well, which is a small intimate club, which we always love doing. Is it Canary Wharf? Canary Wharf. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did that last week. So we won't be in London for a while after this. But um, you should come to the Jazz Cafe when we're on there. Okay, I'm going to take a look and I will definitely be there. Um, okay. Well, Chris, thank you always for your time. I love these types of conversations. They're wholesome and they're energetic. And, you know, I'm going to go off and do my thing. I feel like a superhero at the moment you now. <laughs> well, really, do me a favour and have a listen. Have a look at the... At the okay, uh, yeah, I, I will do. I, I would definitely do. Um, I, I, I need to after this conversation. <laughs> it really will. I promise you, it'll, it'll capture you. Okay. And that means I'll have to interview you in, in, after that as yep. well. So, yep, absolutely. So you give me a buzz when you've seen it and we'll talk about it. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Well, ladies and gents, I've just been talking to Chris Amu from The Real Think. Um, and as you can hear from this, there's so much more coming your way from the group. Look them up on, on you know, all the social media platforms, see where they are performing and go and get a sample and a taste of this incredible group. Chris, take care and say hello today for me. Thank I you. I will. So you take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Out of the sky for you Stop the rain from falling If you ask me to When we say goodnight It hurts me more and more Cause girl it just ain't right To end a day like this Woo!